Is this way of the Kensei monk built and usage correct? Level, 6, race, wood elf, class, monk, way of the Kensei, monk weapons, longsword, longbow, street, 8, dex, 18, 14 point by, 2 wood elf, 2 asi, con, 14, int, 10, wis, 16, 15 point by, 1 wood elf, char, 10, way of the Kensei agile parry states, if you make an unarmed strike as part of the attack action on your turn and are holding a Kensei weapon, you can use it to defend yourself if it is a melee weapon. You gain a plus 2 bonus to AC until the start of your next turn, while the weapon is in your hand and you aren't incapacitated. Raw, I take that, at level 5, you can make an attack with your monk weapon i.e. versatile longsword for 1d10 plus dex, make an unarmed attack with your extra action for 1d6 plus dex, Use flurry of blows for two additional unarmed attacks for 1d6 plus dex each. Or use martial arts for just one additional unarmed attack. Use agile parry for a plus 2 AC until next turn. With a plus 4 dex and plus 3 wis that will result in plus 7 attack, AC 19 and 1d10 plus 2d6 plus 12 to 1d10 plus 3d6 plus 16. That is 24.5 to 31 average damage per turn, every turn, while maintaining a high AC. Is this interpretation and build correct? It feels like it fights better than a fighter, it's as hard to hit as a fighter if not more has slightly lower HP but moves way more and deals considerable more damage which is what makes me doubt whether I'm interpreting the rules wrong. Hash hash you're right on all counts. You've generated your ability scores correctly using point by. You've correctly applied the ASIs for being a wood elf and for turning level 4. A longsword is neither heavy nor special so is a valid choice for a Kensai weapon, making it a monk weapon, which applying martial arts you can wield with dexterity, even though it lacks the finesse property. You calculated your base AC of 17, based on unarmored defense correctly. Thanks to gaining extra attack at level 5 you can make two attacks as part of your attack action, and as long as one of those is unarmed you'll get an extra plus 2 to your AC, until your next turn thanks to Agile Parry. You'll then be able to use a bonus action to make an additional unarmed strike thanks to martial arts, or an additional two unarmed strikes, if you spend a key point, thanks to flurry of blows. All of that will give you, as you stated, 19 AC and, assuming all your attacks hit, allow you to deal either 1d10 plus 2d6 plus 12 damage single bonus action unarmed strike or 1d10 plus 3d6 plus 16 damage flurry each round. Tasty. Hash hash hashtag does all that blow fighters out of the water? Not necessarily, as just one X maple, and sticking to point by 15, 15, 12, 12, 9, 8, a level 5 champion fighter with 18 STR and 18 AC, plate armor, wielding a greatsword, could deal 4d6 plus 8 each round. That's worse than your damage but they'd also be critting on 19s as well as 20s and rerolling any 1s and 2s on their damage die, great weapon fighting. And once per short rest they could do all of that twice 8d6 plus 1 6 as a base in a single turn. Their AC would be marginally worse but their hit dice would be better, and they'd likely have a starting 16 in con too so they'd have an average of 11 more health. If variant human is allowed then they could start with a feat on top of all this too, such as great weapon master more damage or heavy armor master more survivability. I'm not saying this build is definitively superior, but nor do I think it's clear-cut as you were suggesting either.